controller light has gotten three kills in choke with a controller. Definitely works out, and the first point of this game goes towards Solar Light's team here. I've got a question. Solar Light is using a controller. How's he hitting this many pipes with a controller? I mean, maybe he's really good at Call of Duty. Wait, yeah. uh, you were playing on a control the whole time? There is no way I thought you were joking. Why do you think I didn't change my name? You're telling me that you were hitting these pipes on me in the air with a controller? Yeah. Okay, time to insult you too. Your honor has been destroyed. This guy is scripting on How is that no I cheating? Ah! Light coming in with that charge again, just completely. Oh my god, oh He gets another one, that's a double for him, and he's still looking for some more. He finds the demo man. Look at me! Oh, that was almost a good clip. But then I missed my shots and I died. Hey, that wasn't my fault. It was obviously the controller that failed me there, right? Ah, uh, no, that's a rather bad excuse. I'll get to why that's a bad excuse later, but for now, I think I should explain why I'm using a controller in a game where the vast majority of players are using a mouse and keyboard. It's mainly because of the Steam Deck, Valve's handheld gaming PC. You can play TF2 on the go on this thing. Unfortunately, even though I can trimp across maps at very high speed, I can't exactly speed up time. <laughs> but anyway, the main catch of the Steam Deck is that it obviously doesn't have a mouse and keyboard built in. So if you want to play TF2 on a Steam Deck, practice with a controller first. But the idea of playing TF2 on a controller has attracted a bit of skepticism online, at least from what I've seen. Look at this poll I made. A large portion of my viewers seem to believe that the controller is just meh, while a quarter believe that controllers belong in the garbage. It seems that very few people are optimistic about it. If you look in other places like Reddit, the comments you see will often match up with my poll. People often complain that controllers suck at aiming, that controllers are too slow for complicated actions like rocket jumping. In some cases, these comments get an ungodly amount of upvotes. It seems that controllers are often considered a complete joke, not just for TF2, but for first person shooters in general. Yet here I am, tramping around the map, almost as if I'm on a mouse and keyboard. So I like goes all the way! He definitely practiced this one, and what's more impressive that he is indeed using control. I can definitely see his in, in the movement. So what gives? I'm gonna rub it in a little more. Do you want to see me rocket jump? Challenge accepted. Okay, look, I think you get the point. Why is there such a massive discrepancy between what people are saying versus what is actually possible in the game? To figure this out, let's try approaching it from their perspective. This is an Xbox 360 controller. It's the one that most TF2 players are familiar with, especially because TF2 originally came out on that console. It's basic. It includes face buttons, a D-pad, two sticks, two triggers, and two bumpers. No special features are included. It's just a generic run-of-the-mill controller. Rather than use Bluetooth, it comes with its own wireless receiver. If we plug this nearly two decades old hardware into the computer and launch TF2, you'll quickly realize that the right stick's pretty terrible at aiming. Now there are a plethora of reasons for this, but it mainly comes down to the fact that a mouse is simply better at these kinds of camera movements. A mouse gives you a very large area to work with, and it responds to your motions in a very one-to-one -one manner. You can make small adjustments with the wrists, or large movements with the elbow. All of your motions are mirrored into the game, which is not only very intuitive, it also gives you a huge amount of control over your crosshair. There's also no limits on how fast you can move it, letting you flick towards enemies with ease. Meanwhile, a stick doesn't work like this at all. You can see how I'm not moving my thumb. I'm only resting it on the edge, yet the game spins the camera for me. It's not moving my camera in a one-to-one -one way. I'm telling the game to spin on my behalf, sure, but these technically aren't my movements, it's just a command that the game is receiving. The stick also gives you a very small area to work with, and the small size of your thumb doesn't really help either. 
When directly compared to the massive amounts of space available in a mouse mat, there's just no contest. It puts the analog stick at a major disadvantage, giving the player less control over their aim. It's also worth mentioning that many games often compensate for this disadvantage by including some kind of aim assist. However, TF2 does not have aim assist for controller players. You're expected to aim with the raw stick inputs alone, which move in jolting straight lines and often aren't exactly smooth at all. It's no surprise then that a lot of people think controllers suck at aiming. It doesn't matter if you're using this old controller or the new Elite controller, Xbox controllers just don't have what it takes for aiming in a shooter, especially one that is as hectic as TF2 is, and especially one without aim assist. Stop! What the hell's going on? Note how I specifically mention Xbox controllers. That's because other controllers have different functionality. Ask yourself this, what would happen if you took mouse aiming and then put it onto a controller and you use the controller like a mouse? Wouldn't that remove the need for the stick altogether? This is where we decide to put the Xbox controller in the trash and start looking at other controllers instead, like the Switch Pro controller, the DualSense, or well, the DualShock 4. I don't have one of those. These controllers have motion controls, accomplished with the gyroscopes inside. Gyros allow you to emulate a mouse by rotating the controller in different directions. This is called gyro aiming, and it's actually really good. Unlike a stick, you have a lot of room to move the controller around, sort of like playing on a big mouse pad. This is especially true if you crank up the sensitivity setting, just like with a mouse, you can use your wrists to make smaller motions, while using the elbows for big flicks. I can check my back without feeling like I'm throwing my controller around. In fact, I barely need to move the controller at all. I've personally set the sensitivity setting so high that some people think I'm using telekinesis, but your mileage may vary. You might prefer something a bit less intense. Regardless though, this is what allows me to rocket jump and trimp in a very convincing way. To the point where you wouldn't really be able to tell that I'm not using a mouse at all. Since the gyro essentially is a mouse, it can perform just about anything a mouse can. However, this does lead to some interesting questions. You know how you can lift a mouse off the mouse pad to recenter it? How would you go about using that on a controller? It's always in your hands. Well, when you lift the mouse from the mouse mat, it pauses the inputs from the mouse until you put it back down. So the logical idea would be to have a button that pauses the gyro aiming while held. For example, I could put it on a face button. Whenever I hold that button, I can move the controller without it messing up my camera, allowing me to reposition it, just like a mouse. This is otherwise known as gyro ratcheting, and while it does feel a bit weird at first, you can become better at it with some practice. Technically speaking, you could top score in a game in casual mode without even using the right stick at all. I can't aim to save my life with this. How do console players do this? This is fucking impossible. Oh, <laughs> oh I did it again! I did it again! I'm hating this so much. I'm regretting every decision I've ever made. Oh! It's almost like everyone I play with have a huge advantage when they're not playing with like this controller. 100%, 100%, this is a viable way to play Team Fortress 2. It's just gonna take some practice. <laughs> Wrong! Do you remember those flicks from earlier? This guy is spin the stick. I Let's talk about that. One day, a couple years ago, Jib Smart came up with a new way of using the right stick. It's called the Flick Stick, and I think it's better if I let the creator explain his work. This is the Flick Stick. It lets you turn the camera by rotating the right stick. When you first press the stick, you'll make a smooth and quick flick to face exactly the same direction as the stick. You can make further adjustments by rotating the stick, giving you quick access to whatever direction suits you best. The idea behind this is that you use the right stick to instantly point yourself in different directions, and then use the gyro to aim at enemies, just like before. If I hear a spy decloaking behind me, all I have to do is tap the stick down. Oh, the ability to spin around by rotating the stick is also really nice. It's not only faster than using the stick the old-fashioned way, it's also rather precise. 
You can turn as fast or as slow as you need, because the stick always corresponds to where you're facing. It would certainly be interesting if there were a weapon whose entire gimmick was solely based around making funny turns. Ah, it's beautiful. When it comes to charging around on the ground, Flickstick can be really handy for doing quick 180s or spins. The supposed drawback of Flickstick is that it doesn't really have a way of looking up and down. You're using the entire stick just to look left and right. But because it's used in conjunction with gyro aiming, that's not really a problem. The stick was never really good at aiming anyway, so giving it more direct control over where you're looking left and right does make a lot of sense. The other drawback is that it's a bit fiddly to set up in TF2. It's not something you can just enable in the options and be done with it. But thankfully, Valve did add a feature to Steam where you can sort of fake it in by having it pretend to be a mouse input. This There's... guy is scripting. Oh, I'm twisting. Okay, I can kind of see how someone would think that's kind of cheating, but here's my justification. Valve added Flickstick to Steam so that it could be used on any game on Steam. Considering that TF2 is on Steam and that Valve owns both TF2 and Steam, it would be really strange if Valve discouraged players from using their own feature in one of their own games. In fact, Valve even added it as an in-game option in CSGO. Not just that, they enabled it by default. So any new player who stumbles across the game will inevitably learn how to use it, at least on a Steam Deck anyway. Gyro? Yeah. Gyroscopic? That's solid control. Right analog stick kind of snaps you about 90 degrees left, right. Oh! What? Oh, this is hella hard! This is way... Shut the fuck up! Valve is clearly supportive of the feature and want people to use it. They just haven't gotten around to adding it officially to TF2 yet. Probably because this game just doesn't get updated anymore. But regardless, there's at least some way to enable it for now, even if it does require a bit of calibration first. Oh, this menu is called Steam Input by the way, and I haven't even scratched the surface of what this thing can do. It's frankly overwhelming, so I'm not going to cover everything, but here's what I like to use. You can make the buttons on the controller send keyboard inputs instead. This lets you take advantage of things that would otherwise only work on a keyboard. You can also create radio menus and fill them to the brim with keyboard actions. Best of all, you can even put them on touchpads like the ones on the PlayStation controllers. In this case, I actually have one for each thumb. Considering just how many niche keyboard bindings TF2 has, I appreciate this a lot. Seriously, look at this list. You're going to want those. Button combos are also really useful. For example, I could have the A button call for Medic. Medic! But if I hold L and then press A, bloody spy! Obviously, this is all going to be stuff you have to set up yourself. And if you've never used a controller to play TF2 before, all of the stuff I've talked about in this video might be a lot to wrap your head around. While your game knowledge might still be intact, you're essentially starting from scratch when it comes to your aiming and muscle memory. Dumbass. Don't blame the controller. Don't give up. You don't give up. Put some practice in. Play on TR Walkway, play some Doom, do whatever you need to improve, then you'll come back, try again, and you'll probably perform better than you did last time. I know some people are probably going to mention about how nobody uses a controller in competitive, but I'm not really arguing that the controller has a place in competitive TF2. I mean, you can certainly use it in a lower level tournament, like in TF Connect for example, but there's no way you'd ever see it being used at a 6v6 LAN Grand Finals or anything ridiculous like that. Obviously these guys would have absolutely no reason to switch to a controller. Most of these guys have also used a mouse for pretty much their entire lives, but a lot of the stigma about how controllers suck is coming from places like Reddit. In other words, casual players. You guys realize casual mode isn't much of a challenge a lot of the time anyway, right? If someone says no, I'm targeting them for the rest of the round. Oh, we got one. Target acquired. Okay, now I know he's on medic. I feel bad for doing this, but it needs to be done. 150. Nice. 150. Nice. Nice. Oh. Whoops. Okay, never mind, we take those. Nice. 
nice, nice. You know, I was hoping for like a shot reaction or something. Uh, whatever, let's just win. Just to be extra clear, it's not just one person who is being a bit unaware, so don't worry casual mode medic guy, it's not really your fault. Gyro aiming just seems to be something that the entire community as a whole has just missed. Seriously, a thousand upvotes? But I also can't blame these people either, because it's not really their fault for not knowing something they've never used. Gyro Aim has had a cult following outside of TF2 for over half a decade now, but TF2 players, playing on traditionally tower PCs or laptops, have never really had much of a reason to try out Gyro Aiming, since a mouse is still the best way to play. A Steam Deck on the other hand is pretty much the only scenario where Gyro Aiming is the best way of playing, since you wouldn't want to use a mouse and keyboard on that it would defeat the whole point of it being portable in the first place. So with that in mind, if you see anyone who wants to play TF2 on a controller, be helpful. Teach them what controllers can do. Tell them to use the motion controls. Maybe even send them this video. Because in conclusion, if all you care about is casual mode, which to be fair is the vast majority of TF2 players anyway, controllers don't suck. Obviously. As long as you have gyro, you can do well. End of discussion. Wait, no, don't leave. I do have one last controller to show off. It's not a good controller, but it's a funny one. Solo, what the hell is this? That's a good question. This is the Razor Hydra. Po. I'm sorry, what was the. Uh oh, stinky poop. <laughs> Poopies! Funny poopies! <laughs> funny poop! This is the Razor Hydra. It came out in 2011, and it's a bit like a Wii Remote Nunchuck. Both controllers are identical, each having a few buttons and a stick. Meanwhile, the ball thing acts as a sensor. It uses a weak magnetic field to figure out how you're moving and rotating the controllers. It sounds way cooler than it actually is. I'd rather use a normal controller instead. The whole thing feels rather cramped. My thumb often touches the stick when I push the tiny buttons. The controllers also feel kind of plasticky and cheap. Let's just get this out of the way. This controller sucks ass at TF2. So why am I talking about it? Well, it has an interesting story. Back in 2011, Sixth Sense Entertainment, the developers of the Razer Hydra, partnered with Valve to officially support the Hydra in their games. Of course, TF2 was part of that arrangement, and it resulted in quite possibly the most obscure control scheme in the entire game. So what is this weird control scheme then? Well, after entering a console command to enable the controller, I can move my right hand to move the gun. And the crosshair. It looks incredibly cursed, and some of the view models get incredibly broken too. Oh my god, it's a ghost! Soldier, calm down, calm down, calm down! <laughs> As you may have noticed, moving the crosshair will also cause your character to turn in that direction. It's like an analog stick, I guess, but the crosshair is the stick. I think you can see why this controller never caught on. Because you're often aiming the crosshair at the edge of your screen, it gives you a pretty awful view of whatever you're trying to shoot at. Trying to account for this requires you to move your crosshair away from your target, which just never feels right. Now the obvious solution to this problem would have been to use the right stick to move the camera instead, but I can't. 
There's no option to use the right stick for camera controls. The stick just acts as a glorified D-pad for some reason. Jumping was also mapped to a shaking action by default, which will immediately give you some Wii Remote flashbacks. Wii! They at least give you the option to turn it off by editing commands in this config file. This is also where you change what the buttons do as well. I bought this controller on eBay for £78. Dear God. Don't be like me, unless you're very curious about this. I don't think I have much more to say to be honest. I think I'll just play some bonus clips of me just using controllers and stuff. Enjoy. Yay! I gotta ask, Solar Light's like walking around in the server. How is he walking? I don't understand. Practice makes perfect? <laughs> 